Question number seven. Risk reduced instruction set computer and complex instruction set computing are two different types of processors. Tick one box in each row to show if the statement applies to risk or CISC. Okay, larger instruction set. Uh, what does it mean, larger instruction set? Larger instruction set means that there are more than one operation being performed using one single instruction. Contrary to that, we what we have studied in chapter four and uh, under low level languages, the instruction that we had like LDM, LDD, LDI, LDX, LDR add, subtract, and all. Those all were single, simple instructions. So if it is more than one task being performed in one single instruction, that is called uh, complex instruction set computing. Variable length instruction is again. So since you have more than one operation, it means that you are at your liberty to have more than one operation in one single instruction like we do in high level languages. In that case, it is complex instruction set code. So for us, any instruction that we already had seen in chapter four and low level languages, uh, those were of fixed size. Their word size was fixed. So if it is variable, simply it means that it is not what we have studied. And if it is not what we have studied, then it is complex instruction set code. Smaller number of instructions, it is reduced. Pipelining is easier. Pipelining is the process where there are more than one instructions in the system. So if it is reduced instruction set code, obviously it is easier because there is just one instruction at a time. If it is complex instruction set code and there are multiple instructions in the system at any given time for fetch, decode, and execute, in that case, it becomes very complex. Microprogram. Microprogram control unit means that this is now the duty of microprogram control unit to break all the instructions, simplify the instructions in complex instruction set code so that computer could carry them out one by one. So ultimately, if it is risk or says computer can do just one thing at a time. So if it is complex instruction set code means a construction, an instruction has got more than one uh, operations to perform, then not you, but the computer is doing it itself. So if computer is actually breaking an instruction, means we have to write less because we are writing complex instruction, but computer would be doing it. So in risk, computer does not have to do that. It does not have pro micro program control in it because every instruction is so simple. Okay, multiple instructions, cycles, yes. If it is multiple instructions per instruction, it, it means that you have to multi-cycle the instruction to complete it. Multi-cycle means you have to get through every instruction for fetch, decode, and execute. So if an instruction has got more than one operation, it means that you would have to go through the same instruction again and again and again to solve all the parts. In parallel processing, a computer can have multiple processors running in parallel. Okay. State for basic computer architecture used. SISD, single instruction, single data stream. Uh, single instruction, multiple data stream, uh, multiple instructions, single data stream, multiple instructions, multiple data stream. This is what we have studied in chapter three. Describe what is meant by massively parallel computers. It has large, this is basically the supercomputer, large number of processors installed and multi-programming is happening, okay? Multi-programming means a large array of processors doing same program. It is mostly used for uh, disease research, molecular research, outer space research, mainly weather research, okay? These processors are 
communicating using a dedicated network and its interface. This is AI based dedicated network interface that is required since there are so many processors, they all are working on the same program. So there will be a lot of input and a lot of output. And the network would have a lot of data traveling at the same time. So in order to avoid any collision, any delays, there is AI based network interface that is happening. It is called messaging API or network interface, messaging interface. A computer process can be in one of the three states. All right, so when a process enters the system, it is ready state. So what brings it in? High level scheduler. From ready state to the running, this is low level scheduler. So there is, some sort of algorithm applied over these multiple programs in the ready state, which are actually waiting for their turn to come. These are called jobs. Jobs are those programs which are loaded and not executing. Once the job arrived in microprocessor, it starts executing and becomes a process. So, while in the running state, there might be another job in the ready state that has higher priority. So the program which has not yet been completed, not yet have completely executed, can go back to the ready state. All right. And if it gets finished, then it gets out from the running state. So if they ask, when does computer and when does a program enter the computer? when it gets to the ready state. When does it get out? When it is done through the running state. So ready state is a queue because there are multiple programs waiting in the ready state. It is in the RAM, where is the running state is a microprocessor and there is only one job. Sometimes a job that is waiting for some input and output might be wasting turns over here and time over here. So such type of job will be sent out to the waiting or blocked state. So once it finishes its IO, it reaches out to ready state and will then get to the running state when the turn comes. So what is actually taking all these jobs and processes between these three states? That is low level scheduler. But if a job that has not any particular task which is for IO is just wasting space over here and time over here. And we might need more space so that we could load more programs, such type of job which not yet been closed by us. We have to take that out so that we could find more space. So such type of programs will be sent out to the storage. Okay. And when we get back to those programs, we load them back from the storage. So this might be your storage. As in, I have loaded Microsoft Word and left it open, neither typing nor printing, no, not anything. I'm just into the browser and doing some Facebooking or something. So that program is loaded that is actually getting back and forth between the ready and running state for the reason that when the turns come, it goes there and then it goes back. So if we load another program and this Microsoft Word program is basically idle, not doing anything. So that will be sent out to the storage. Logically, this program is loaded. Okay, technically it is now in the storage. So even, if I like to get back and I click on Microsoft Word, 
system will see what is now idle. At that time, system will find one idle program, send it out to the storage to find more to find more storage for the Microsoft Word, which was earlier sent to the storage, and it will be loaded back. So that is what is happening. So this whole process is called scheduling. The part of the operating system which does scheduling is called scheduler and it has got three parts. High level scheduler that loads the job from the storage and put it in the ready queue. Low level scheduler which takes the program in between all three states as per the uh, priority algorithms and medium level scheduler. What are those priori priority algorithms? First, first come, first serve means whatever job that reaches out to the running state will be served as in completed. Okay. Shortest job first, it means whatever the job that is the shortest one will be sent out to the processor shortest remaining time a job that has not much to do will be sent out first round robin means every job no matter how large how small it is by by saying large i mean that number of instructions in the job okay no no matter how long the job is basically uh, it will be it will be given the same amount of time and in turns. Okay, so this is basically called round robin. All right. First come, first serve is basically once the job is in the microprocessor, it will only out. So it is basically a job that will leave the processor once it is finished and rest of these three will be finished, uh, will, will be sent back to the ready queue even if they are not finished, okay? So identify and describe two of these states. State one is ready state. State two is let's say running state. State three is let's say block state. Description the process is waiting in queue. and waiting and the process is waiting in queue for its turn for execution. Running a state process is being executed in the process of block state process is waiting for IO to be finished. Okay. Uh, one of the main tasks of an operating system is resource management. Describe how an operating system can maximize the use of resources. All right, so primary memory. Describe how an operating system can maximize the use of resources. So what? major resources do we have? We have the processor, the memory, and the storage. Processors management is done using scheduling. Memory uh, um, is done, memory uh, resource management is done using paging or segmentation and all. And disk is 
using other methods like disk caching and compression and all. Okay, so primary memory. Uh, use of, let's see how many marks are there, six. Use of virtual memory. Loading required or frequently required instructions to SRAM from DRAM. The physical memory outside microprocessor is called dynamic RAM and whatever the instructions those are being executed will be uh, gone out to SRAM so that they are readily available for the processor. Otherwise, the time it takes from the DRAM to SRAM will uh, delay or slows down the execution. All right, so SRAM is also called cache. Uh, other could be offloading idle programs to the storage okay uh best use of multi programming i don't want to make it very complex for you you need to understand that a ram is holding a space for the operating system currently running programs and their data we cannot get rid of operating system. This is system's priority and it will be there and it will remain there. This is the duty of those software houses like Microsoft and Apple, which are actually making these operating systems to make them as small as possible. That is why they call it uh, uh, kernel. Kernel is basically the part of the operating system uh, which is the smallest possible part of the operating system that remains in the memory to oversee everything that is happening. Okay, so as far as the operating system is concerned, we cannot actually do anything to maximize the use of RAM. Otherwise, we have got all the programs. So if we have got all of the programs, so the first thing that the RAM should does is uh, should do, sorry, it, it, it actually manages all the program in the computer memory and do not let one program intervene in another computer's program in the computer's memory. So that is the best use of multi-programming. And then whatever the program which is loaded and not being used and we need more space, it can be transferred to the disk. All right, use of virtual memory in paging. And then the program which is being executed, it's all instructions are required by the microprocessor. The time it takes from the RAM to the microprocessor is a lot. So it cannot be uh, actually accepted that every single instruction is going one after the other. That is why the processor has got another RAM called uh, SRAM, static RAM or cache. So all the frequently used instructions which are being used by the current program should be transferred to SRAM. So this is what something that you need to understand. Okay. So use of virtual memory with paging. This is the right mix now. Now the disk. Uh, this must be cached, disk caching or indexing. 
defragmentation proper defragmentation is done you know what defragmentation is when we are picking up programs which are actually divided into sectors over the disk. We are talking about the magnetic disk. Defragmentation is not required with SSDs. Okay. So we should put the number of uh, sectors related to one program together so that those could be picked faster. Okay. If those sectors are not, I'll talk about it. If those, uh, Yushe, I'll talk about it. Uh, if those, Sectors are not uh, found in consecutive areas. Picking up those factors will require a lot of time. So defragmentation should be done. Okay. Then compression. can be used to store files in, to store more files. In disk. Uh, defragmentation, compression, This caching can be done. This caching is basically cache, this cache holds the data that is frequently required and transfer first to RAM. And then we may have uh, disk caching, compression, disk indexing. Should be done. So the files can be located or accessed very fast. Okay. So that's about it. Uh, to read about this caching, as we have not discussed it because it is not part of the syllabus. Okay, but this indexing, compression, and defragmentation, we have studied it. Now for this threshing. This threshing is basically a situation when when pages in frames are being swapped with the virtual memory pages and same pages are relocated for an indefinite time continuously means we have got less space in ram and we want to load more programs all right so this pages and RAM in paging this threshing only occurs when there is virtual memory and virtual memory only occurs when there is uh, uh, pages. Okay. So when pages in frame, what is frame? The part of the memory which is holding those pages are being swapped with the virtual memory pages and same pages are re uh, relocated for an indefinite time. So the pages are being swapped between the RAM and the virtual memory very fast for several reasons. 
when virtual memory storage and page frame both are full now system needs to expand virtual memory virtual memory is on the physical storage that physical storage is magnetic virtual memory is present in the consecutive memory area let's say the virtual memory's area over the disk is tight within all and it, uh, within its uh, area within its boundary and anything around this boundary is full so system would have to relocate the data around the boundary so that it could expand the virtual memory that will require a lot of work magnetic disk is slower if you compare it with the ram so the task that can be done in the ram is much 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 faster than the task that is done over the disk so you can now imagine that the disk is being used at its full because the data around the boundary of the virtual memory is being removed not removed relocated the pages between the ram and the virtual memory are being swapped so those pages are also being read from the disk and being stored on the disk so system becomes so much occupied that it does not respond to the user user waits meanwhile the disk is being used at its full throttle there might be crisp crisp sounds coming out of the disk and this may crash the disk this may brings a hardware failure for the disk so it is a deadlock occurs and system goes non responsive and hard disk is being maximized on usage and may crash this is called thrashing so let me just put it in one single sentence pages are being exchanged between the virtual memory and the ram they both are full we require a bigger virtual memory so virtual memory is being expanded and meanwhile system goes non responsive this is called this thrashing and this thrashing only occurs in the paging system because paging system requires virtual memory otherwise not all right remember press about it so thank you very much i see you next time take care